welcome back to another episode of Strong in the Saddle. Just got in from the barn, did not go, I don't know what I expected. I went up to the arena with Diesel just to do some groundwork, but we have like a layer of snow and then underneath is like a layer of bumpy ice. So we basically couldn't do anything in the arena. Um, we went and found a piece of snow, did a bit of groundwork stuff, and then just went for a walk, which is not what I would like to be doing. I would like to be out in a sandy arena, loping big circles and doing rollbacks and whatever else, but we have to wait. Just have to be patient. I just have to be happy spending time with my horse. But today we are talking about kind of like two of the same concept, I guess. One being it's not too late and you're not too old. <laughs> um, as silly as it sounds, at 32 years old, I'm 32, I feel like I have missed the boat a little bit when it comes to horses. I've had horses in my life since I was 10 years old and looking like if you would have asked even like 16, 18 year old Katrina, where do you think you would be by the time you're 32 with horses? I would have thought I would have been in a very different place. And it kind of frustrates me that I haven't progressed more than I have with my horses. And I feel like I've missed out and like it's too late but it, it that's not true it is not true at all and i actually had a really good reminder of this today i was watching a youtube video i don't remember whose channel it was on but she was interviewing this guy i think he was in some sort of mustang makeover challenge or something like that he didn't start riding horses till he was 40 years old and I think it's like five years later now, he's a full-blown horse trainer competing at big events and living his best life with horses. And while I, ha I have zero <laughs> ambitions to be a horse trainer, I do have other horsey ambitions. And his example is a great reminder to me that it's not too late. Like he went to school as an older person and, you know, like did the horse training schooling thing and now is doing the thing in his day-to-day -day life. Another example I love is June Holman. She competed at the NFR, it was in like 2005, I think. And I think she was in her mid sixties competing at the NFR, which I think that is so cool to have a grandma competing at the NFR. And she's the perfect example that you are not too old. Like if she can do something as, as extreme as barrel racing at the very top level, then there's no reason that why I, as a young, 32 year old can't do whatever it is I have in terms of aspirations with horses. So those two examples, as much as I am like, you know, ho-hum me, those two examples give me hope that, yeah, it's not too late, you're not too old. There's no reason that you cannot achieve all of the things that you want to with horses. That being said, I will say one of the reasons why I am not further along with my horses than I would have anticipated, I've squandered some opportunities. I've been very blessed in my life to have several really good opportunities when it comes to horses and I have not like seized those opportunities, ran with them and lived them out to the fullest. I have not. And that's for a variety of reasons. One of them being, I would say fear. I, as I've said in past episodes, I have struggled with fear and confidence issues on horses a lot, 
that has definitely held me back. Another thing is just, I'm very much a person of routine and predictability and control. And a lot of times when I'm presented with an opportunity, there's a level of uncertainty that comes with that. It's something I haven't done before. I don't know how things are gonna pan out. If I go with the opportunity, there's a chance it might not work, which that's not always a cozy feeling. And I think a lot of that has held me back quite a bit where I just like being cozy in where I'm at, in my comfort zone, but then you get to a spot like I'm at now where I look back and I'm like, well, it's not cozy here knowing that I've squandered opportunities and I haven't achieved the things that I want to achieve. Like that sucks too. So it's kind of like, do you want to live in the suck that is not achieving your goals, not becoming the person you want to be? Or do you want to live in the uncomfortable of like the uncertainty of something new? and growing as a person like pick your sucky i guess is what i'm trying to say that's held me back a lot and it frustrates me a lot that my personality is like that that it would hold me back but i think it it's really important that i've identified that because if i know i have a tendency to not take advantage of opportunities in front of me then going forward maybe i can be ahead of that, I guess, and know that yes, it's gonna be uncomfortable, but it's gonna be worth it. Another reason why I don't think I've progressed as much as I have is just a lack of clear, very concrete goals. I've always had goals when it comes to my horses, but sometimes they are goals without clear steps on what I'm exactly going to do, you know, this riding season, this month, this week, today. I, I haven't reverse engineered the goals enough to be like, this is what you need to be doing every single day. This is what you need to be doing this week in order to get where you want to get. And I think regardless of what your goal is, whether that be with horses or not, having clear steps like that and like yeah just being very very clear on the things that you need to do in order to achieve a goal is very very important and again it's good that i've identified that because now i can be like okay if my goal is to compete i don't know this isn't a goal at the moment but if i wanted to compete in raining alberta shows with diesel what are the steps that i need to be doing to in order to do that and like literally writing it down having maybe a checklist every single day every single week so that i achieve those goals because if i don't do that it is so easy to get into this place where you're just going through the motions every day and not making progress i definitely fell into that last year with diesel we I got very comfortable and we did not progress. So with all that being said, yes, it's not too late and I'm not too old to achieve my horse goals. But if I don't make some changes, there is gonna be a point where it is too late, right? If I continue doing what I've always done, I'm not gonna make any progress and I'm gonna be sitting here at 85 years old and I could potentially be too old at that point to achieve my goals. So it's very, very critical that now I make use of all of the resources available to me. And I will say I am very blessed with the resources available to me. I have a very good job that affords me the time, the money, the things to be able to you know, have my horses for one, have this place that we have. If I want to go, if I need to take time off to go for riding lessons or to compete, I can do that. If I need to pay for lessons or a clinic, I can do that. 
If Diesel needed to go off for training, I can do that. I, most of the year, I work 40 hours a week, which gives me plenty of time to be out at the barn training and spending time with my horse. Like I have the resources available. It's just a matter of me being like, okay, now we need to do something with those resources. So I've, yeah, it's kind of like, we need to get your butt into action here, girl. So here in 2024, I was like, I was writing down what kind of opportunities are available that I could take advantage of to help me out here. So clinics, in 2022, I took two different reigning clinics that helped me quite a bit. There's training programs online. Um, you know, I can just follow along with those. I can take lessons. There's a cow horse trainer, like half an hour from here. There's a reining trainer, 45 minutes over there. Like there's, there's a Western pleasure trainer, 15 minutes over there. there like there's people here. Uh, if I wanted to do barrel racing for whatever reason, trainers here, there, everywhere. People are available. I just need to reach out if I want to do the lesson thing. Competition. There's nothing like being entered in a competition to get your butt in gear. And I definitely found that in 2022 when I competed in, I think we did nine shows. That really forced me to be like, okay, what do we need to focus on? What do we need to work on? Let's get it done. Like there's nothing like a competition date to make you work. So competitions. I think another good idea is networking. So I wrote down like events, conferences, expos, meeting horse people. I feel like I'm in my own horse bubble. I need to get in like the horse industry's horse bubble, hang out with more horse people. I think that will really help. If I'm around horse people, I think that will help. Like, what's this phrase? Um, a rising tide raises all ships, I think is the phrase, right? So like raise up with a bunch of other people within the horse industry. I think that will be really good. And, you know, maybe some sort of mentorship. I don't know if that would just come from someone who's giving me riding lessons or something like that. But yeah, it's not too late. I'm not too old. I do need to get my button gear though. So I'm very very antsy right now i'm in tax season i have limited time to ride until may 1st so until then it's kind of like oh i want to ride so bad the weather's crap but we just once may 1st gets here <laughs> full steam ahead for sure because like I said, yes, it's not too late, but there's going to be a time where it will be too late. So I need to seize the day and make it work now. So I will leave it there. Be sure to follow me everywhere at Strong in the Saddle. And until next time, remember, it's always a good day to ride.